Hello folks and welcome to Skegness, voted the worst seaside town in the UK for the last four years in a row. And I'm here on a mission to try and find out why. Because full disclosure, I've been coming here since I was a kid. I grew up in Peterborough between here and Hunstanton. They were basically our two seaside options that were relatively nearby as a kid. So I'm very much used to Skegness and I get a lot of childhood nostalgia just from being around the place. So I'm trying to clear my mind, come into this with an open mind, clear head and work out what everyone else is seeing or I guess not seeing about Skegness to consistently vote this as the worst seaside town in the UK. I could get it if it wasn't the best one, it probably isn't the best one, but the worst one every single year? I'm not sure I'm having it. We need to go and have an explore. And I've deliberately started at the north end of town at the North Beach, because I think one of the things Skegness does get a lot of criticism for is the tackiness, for want of a better word. It's very bright light, lots of noise, ice cream vans, chip shops, lots going on, and I get it. And to be fair, a lot of people love it, but there's also a lot of people who don't. They want a nice, quiet beach. Well, this is just before 6 p.m., on a Saturday in August, we are within the borders of Skegness. I haven't come miles up the coast. Skegness Pier is just there. We're no more than a 10 minute walk from the bright lights and the shenanigans. And if that isn't a nice little quiet, relaxing beach for you to just hang out on and enjoy being next to the sea, I don't know what is. So explore a little folks. That car park's cheaper as well. The North, the North Beach car park, much cheaper and easier to get into than the one right smack, smack bang in the center of the town. So I've made it as far as the pier, walking on the beach there, and you can just, I don't know if you can hear it, just start to hear the, uh, the town center seaside fun starting to set in as we hit our first set of amusements, our first fun fair. This is where it starts to get a little bit more hustling and bustling. You can just kind of see through there, the other side of the pier, there's stuff. In fact, I don't think we're missing out very much if we just cut off this corner here, that Premier Inn. I don't know that that's been there long. That doesn't look massively familiar to me, um, but I think the only thing you've got the other side there is a McDonald's, which again, we don't necessarily need to see. I get there's parts of the town that were a little bit worse for wear, it's a little bit run down, but that's the same as everywhere. You name me a good pier you can walk under. And this boat ride is cool, I've done this before. You can basically get on a boat over there and ride it all the way around this little area. You can see there's people up there uh, already doing it, which is a really cool ride. And then as we emerge out from under the pier, in fact, there's the McDonald's I was talking about before. You've got a little row of amusements down here on the left and then there's more amusements on what's left of the pier on that side so you can see the pier doesn't go very far um, I think there was a fire on it many many years ago now um, and most of it was destroyed but you've still got stuff at that end and then this is the beach that I guess when people think Skegness Beach this is the one they're actually thinking of with, looks like they have trampolines on here during the day. And down there is where you get your donkey rides. And that's got your, uh, all your toilets and main, I guess what I would consider the main Skegness car park over there. And then you've got fairground rides at the back. I think we're gonna go up this way and loop back around and come back up that way afterwards. Cause I wanna, I wanna get into the, into the heart of the action over here. One thing is for sure in Skegness, if you forget your bucket, your spade, your bodyboard, your bucket hat, there's a thousand shops that have very much got you covered. So there's a closer look at the stuff at this end of the pier, bowling alley, tattoo studio, lots and lots of amusements. You've also got Skegness at Pleasure Beach here, which is one of the fun fairs through there and then more amusements going back that way 
I'm not sure what time the fun fair closes. Opens at 8, 11. I have been down to Fantasy Island at Ingemel's on this same trip. And I know that's open till 10 o'clock at night, but I don't see a sign on this saying what time it closes, but it's uh, gone six now. and looks very much still open at the moment. So if we come up here past the pier, you can see that we've got one of many arcades, Funland, Bingo over there, the back end of a McDonald's, and then we come around here into more of the amusements that just surround the Pleasure Beach Fun Fair. It's literally surrounded on all sides by all of these amusement arcades. Other side of the road there, you can see we've got 10 pin bowling. There's, uh, there's a lot. And I like all this. This is all part of coming to the seaside for me, coming into a place like this. And like I say, if it's not your thing, go further down the, go a little bit further down the shore. If it's these things that are making people moan, because all you can hear is the noise of air hockey and, and fruit machines, live a little. We're going to go through here because I think this gets us into the affair. If we go through this way, there you go, we're heading straight out that door over there to get outside. A little diner in here as well. And this brings us into the Pleasure Beach where, I mean, as far as seaside fun fairs go, they don't come much better than this. There's a ghost train there. We'll have a little look around in here. It's a, uh, it's a token or wristband affair. So there's no cost of entry. You pay per ride, or if you want to go on loads of rides, you get a wristband. Let's go and check out the prices for tokens and wristbands over here. That's always a pretty good indication, but there's a good little assortment of rides, especially for younger children, I think, in here. Um, do we have a price list? Here we go, so tokens. Tokens are a pound each, or you can get 30 tokens. Like 40 tokens for 30 pounds doesn't say how much a wristband is. Maybe there is no wristband. Maybe it is just tokens. Oh no, there you go, wristband. So an all day unlimited wristband is 25 pounds. An evening wristband is only 15 pounds. And then it's cheaper for children. But I guess coming in at this time, we very much qualify for an evening wristband. So depending on what time they're open until, you could come in here, drop 15 pounds, and have a night in the fair. And there's, I mean, it's a decent fair. There's a lot to it. There's a lot going on in here. As is compulsory at the seaside now, we've got a big wheel. We've got the waltzers. There's loads more, like fairground stall things over there, knocking cans down, shooting galleries, that kind of thing. I mean, it's definitely somewhere where you could spend an evening, spend an afternoon, and have a jolly nice time. There you go, we've got a shooting gallery right next to me now. Off the back of the fair, we've got a nice little boardwalk which I think it's quite nice on here. They even have a salad bar there. I mean, it's mainly burgers and jacket potatoes, but there are salads involved as well. A few little gift shops with typical seaside knickknacks and stuff. Plenty of places to get ice cream and sweets from, that's for sure. You having a bit of fun now? And then these dummies seem to be making a bit of a resurgence. I've seen a lot of these around. They were big when I was a kid. And then, so that was Bottoms Pleasure Beach. Okay, so the boardwalk's part of the Pleasure Beach. And then we get out onto what I would consider the main road here in Skegness, where you can see we have plenty of hotels, bars, and amusements that way. Big amusement arcade on this side of the road. And then they only get bigger and shinier the further down you go, we've got 10 pin bowling in there, lots of flashing lights and things to draw the eye. But if we continue down the street here, this water ride has been here forever. I don't even know that it's part of the fair or anything. It's just kind of a separate thing next to the street. 
and it runs all year round. I've seen that thing going in February. Genuinely don't think it's connected to anything else either side of it. It's just, let's have a roadside water ride because why not? And then, what have we got up here? I don't normally venture along here, along the road. Normally we'd walk along the beachfront, but we'll loop back round and do that on the way back. What we have got over here is Tower Gardens, which is a nice little park to go and have a little walk around, which is, I mean, in fact, let's go and have a look. Because again, it's nice. I need to, I need to influence the voting on these, on these polls. This is what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to influence the voting. I don't have a membership to the consumer group, which, so I can't vote directly. But some of you might. I don't really know how they work. But start treating Skegness with the respect it deserves, boys and girls. So if we uh, hover over here, you can see that's the, you can actually get a proper look at the Skegness Embassy Theatre from this side. So we've got a big bar, grill and friary there. And then a theatre, the Jolly Fisherman, which is a pub, I think. And then this is Tower Gardens, which is a lovely place. If, again, you want to get away from some of the hustle and bustle a little bit, you can immediately, as soon as you step in, the volume immediately drops. The noise from the road, the noise from the amusement, and it's just a nice park where you can sit and enjoy a nice day. It's a little play area for the kids. There's benches scattered around the place as well. You've even got public toilets, which I never knew were there. And toilets can be pretty hard to come by at the seaside. So if we head out of the Tower Gardens and turn right, we can now see the famous big clock, which I would consider to be the center of Skegness. On the middle of that roundabout, that then leads down to the big car park, the seafront down that way. This is Andy's favourite uh, arcade here in Skegness, the Lucky Strike Arcade. This arcade is on, it is multiple floors. It's like a four storey thing with all the amusements you can imagine in there. There's soft play, there's bowling, there's ice cream, there's a bar, there's a little balcony up there where you can sit and eat an ice cream or have a drink and look out over whatever's going on out here. It's, uh, it is everything you could possibly want from an arcade. It is enormous, one of the biggest and coolest arcades I've ever been in. And thinking of the balcony up there and times in the past when I've been sat on it, I know that over here, possibly over here, I think it's over here, there's an outdoor swimming pool. We're gonna go and have a look for that as well. So there we have the swimming pool. Skegness Pool and Fitness Suite, which looks pretty closed for the day now. You can see the back end of the Embassy Theatre and the big wheel, and more amusements the other side of that, including this massive climbing thing, which I would never be brave enough to go on, but looks pretty cool. Now, I'll level with you. I'm nothing if not fair. Does stink a bit of wee in there. Gonna move on from the wee wall. But once we get back out onto the road again, it smells of fresh flowers, which is very much appreciated. So we can see the other side of Lucky Strike, the arcade we were looking at before, and you can see just how high up that goes. That is, I'm seeing through the windows at least three stories. I think it's four. And then next to Lucky Strike, we have something that I think sums Skegness up perfectly. Not the cocktail lounge, not Busters, but the four fish and chip shops in a row only in Skegness and the theming on this one is really really cool you've got Spider-Man climbing on the wall outside you've got pirates all over the place at that one all the way up the building and you can hear them as well they are making a lot of noise but then next to the trawlers catch fish and chip shop if you ignore the Skegness X service club which is there you get Tony's fish and chips then you've got Harry Ramsbottom's fish and chips on the corner and then You've got more fish and chips around the corner as well. And if that's not enough, once you get to the other side of the road, you have Hussey's fish and chips, clock tower fish and chips, and a rock shop. What a town. What a town. So if you head up that street, it's lots more fish and chip shops, lots more 
rock shops, but also it starts to become a little bit more like a normal town centre up there. Right at the end of that street is the train station. There's a little shopping centre up there as well. I'm not going to take you down there because it literally just becomes a normal town centre. And if the normal town centre is what's causing people to downvote it, I've been to plenty of seaside places that don't even have a town centre, so I don't know how that can stand against it. But you can see as we continue to turn around the roundabout, that has the big clock tower on, by the way. That's uh, quite a famous thing. If you buy a Skegness postcard, it's probably got that on it. Um, you can see that there's more bars, more fish and chip shops, more fish and chip shops, and more fish and chip shops. And then the hotels start again as you get a little bit further down that way. We're not going to go down there because it literally is just hotels down that way. Um, but this way, we have another one of the things that is likely to be on a postcard if you buy a Skegness postcard. It is the Jolly Fisherman. There you go, we've got some details of the Jolly Fisherman there. There is the man himself. The other cool thing as well is all around him. You have these little markers on the floor that tell you what direction stuff is in. Um, so for example, in that direction is Brussels, but we can go all the way around this and just see all of these various places. There's not a lot directly north of here because we are about as far out on the east coast as you can get. It's pretty much just sea if you go north, but then if you start to go a little bit more northwest, we start to get some places within the UK. And for me, there's Derby, Nottingham, Birmingham. Here we go, Leicester. So that way is home for me. We have to go straight past the clock tower. And if we spin you around, you can see the Jolly Fisherman is basically looking at my house. What a guy. And then when we're done with the Fisherman, you can come through this archway and you get to another little bit of green space. I like a little bit of green space. We've got some nice little benches with some nice little trees, a nice little gazebo over there, somewhere where you can buy a little something to eat or a coffee. And then once again, we get this view of this massive climbing frame. If I can get round to it, here it is. All this is lit up, by the way, in the evening. You can see all of the lights around the place. It is very pretty at night, but there is the big climbing thing, which again, closed to the evening now, but that's got to be a lot of fun if you are that way inclined. I am absolutely not that way inclined. So I'm going to head over here before I accidentally end up on it. So we're now headed back to the little clock tower bit. We're going to cross over this road here because there's more going on over there for us to explore before we head back down to the beach and complete our Skegness loop. So just here, we've got a very cool adventure golf that I've only ever done once because we can do adventure golf at home. There's a cool adventure golf place in Leicester, but for a nice outdoor seaside adventure golf in the summer, on a summer's evening like this, if I have the rest of the family with me, that is a way to spend an evening. Nice evening for it, but probably not going to do it on my own. I think I'll probably get some looks. One of many, and I mean many, places where you can get donuts and ice creams for very much seaside prices. And then you've got Skegness Aquarium here, which, there you go, sign for Skegness Aquarium. It's also got something called Jurassic Falls. I don't know what Jurassic Falls is. I've been in the aquarium years ago, but it looks like it's had a bit of a, uh, a spruce up with the theming. Is this now two different places? Or have they just got dinosaur-y themed stuff in the aquarium? I feel like I might need to go and find out at some point. And then we continue to head down through these fancy, arty lamp posts, which are another quite iconic Skegness thing. By iconic, I mean, yes, it would be on a postcard. More places to get fish and chips, to get slush, churros, donuts, coffees, chunky monkey ice cream over there. And, oh, the driving school. Oh, I remember this from when I was a kid. Is this open? Because this was so cool. I'm getting distracted. I want to have a go at this. 
There you go, you can just see over there the other side of the boats. Kids driving uh, little go-karts around. In fact, there's several adults on that. That is by no means just kids. I remember doing it as a kid, but you go up over that bridge, you go into the tunnel over there. Um, I think that bridge is the one that goes over the, the water where we were before near the pier. And then you can get these boats that go on the little boat tours like we were talking about before. So they are both very, very cool activities. And if you're into boats and water and whatnot, then this is very much the spot for you as we continue a slow walk down towards the beach you can see we've got all of these little pedalo boats that go out on this little bit of uh, I want to say lake but it's probably not I want to say river it's probably not it's probably seawater I know it's not very deep but you can go all the way up there on them and again it's a fun time but not for me on my own it's not one of those things I've done like once or twice in my life. It was cool. If you did everything here in one weekend, you would have an incredible weekend. And then we kind of swing back round to the car park that I've parked in many, many times before, which is this one over here. The amount of videos we've made over the years in Skegness that have started from this car park that still looks very full even at this time of night. Like I said before, so much easier, so much cheaper to park at the other end of town. But behind the car park, which I think is relatively new, because I don't think I've been in here before, they now have a vintage fair, which is another one of those things that I'm pretty sure before the weekend is done, we are going to be making use of. Looks like it's another token fair. That's very much the way of doing things around here. But it's all, uh, it's all nice boardwalk stuff. And for a Saturday evening, it is not busy at all. But there is a lot in there. Again, just the kind of classic fairground stuff that Andy in particular loves. So vintage fairground, big thumbs up. We will make use of that for sure. More public toilets. Two sets of public toilets, that is. You can't vote it down for lack of public toilets. And there we have another little shot that sums up Skegness beautifully. You've got the fair, ice cream, fish and chips, and then more ice cream. The clock tower. You can just about catch the jolly fishermen. The arcades over there. And then into the fairground. And if we keep spinning all the way around, you can get yourself more ice cream, some slush, and we finally get to the beach. I realise I started the video at the beach, but you know, I've been away from it for an hour. You can also get vodka slush from here. My first ever vlog, like seven, eight years ago, we came here. And I remember mentioning the vodka slush because it fascinated me then and it fascinates me now. Vodka slush. Maybe that's why this is the worst seaside town in the UK. Can you get that everywhere else? That is a reason to downvote. And then this is the beach. You can see the fair we walked past before. In the background, there's the pier that we were at a little while ago. And then all of this lovely flat sand. It's a little rough. It's a little, a little uncomfortable in places. It's not the finest sand, but it's, it's not as hot as the sand would be in Spain. That's a good thing. British weather. And then you've got all of the wind turbines out to sea, which I don't know if the camera's even going to pick up. But again, some might consider them a bit of an eyesore. I quite like mechanical stuff and Andy definitely enjoys it. It's just sort of standing in the sea and watching them. So maybe controversial. Give me a beach like this rather than a pebbly thing like Brighton or somewhere like that. Any day. I acknowledge Brighton might be a overall better place to go and spend a weekend but if we're doing literally beach versus beach this takes some beating and when you're talking about seaside resorts the beach has surely got to be heavily weighted in the voting surely my word this place does jaeger bomb slush copperberg slush you name it if it's alcoholic you can have it in a slush, which is either a very good thing or a very bad thing, depending on your point of view. 
So yeah, they've got a full list here. You can get slushy cocktails. Wowzers. Oh, they do have kids slush as well, which I guess is the, the non-alcoholic non kind. And then we are back around the other side of the fair. We might actually get a better view of the driving from here. If we go up to this fence, I think you'll be able to see these go-karts coming by a little bit better than where we were before. Here we go, look. So cool. That is another very fun way to spend half hour or so. The fact you get to go up over the bridge, I used to love going up over the bridge. And you can see the little boating lake goes around the, uh, or the boating river, boating canal, whatever you want to call it, goes around the edge of it as well. And it looks like this is Crazy Golf, which, this is hole nine. Is this the golf that we were looking at before? I feel like we're in a completely different spot. But there is golf around the back of here as well, which, I think there might be two adventure golf things, and I've never seen this one before. There's also an upside down house, which I also don't remember having seen before. But uh, that's awesome. And then we've got the back end of the fair here as well, as we continue to head back down towards the pier and the North Beach once again. And as we arrive back at the pier and pretty much complete our loop of the touristy bit here in Skegness, that pretty much brings us to the end of the video. I hope I've done enough to convince you that there is no way Skegness should be getting voted as the worst seaside town in the country. Again, putting my, putting my growing up in Peterborough hat back on as a kid, we came here a lot, but we also came to Hunstanton and Cromer a lot. They were, they were the kind of the three that were all the same kind of distance from where I lived. This is the best of those three. This has got more to do. I mean, we've just done a tour now showing you just a small selection of some of the activities that you've got going on here. If you go a little bit further afield, there's even more. I mentioned before, you go two miles down the coast, you've got Fantasy Island, which is a whole theme park. And you know, there are little things like that scattered along this little bit of coast. There is no way, there is no way this is the worst seaside town in the UK but let me know what you think down in the comments section if I have to go to every single one of them and prove it to you I'll go to every single one and prove it to you because I am I am convinced this this town is getting harshly treated Skegness is awesome and hopefully you can now see a little bit more about why this is this is my kind of seaside place i like it here a lot uh, but hopefully you have enjoyed this video if you have please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on it for me it is pretty much the most helpful thing you can do to support a new channel get off the ground nice big thumbs up maybe let me know down in the comments what seaside places you think are better equally what seaside places you think are worse where do i need to go and check out next maybe that can be the next thing i focus on after i've been to all of the theme parks in the country maybe the next thing needs to be seaside towns i like to have a project subscribe to the channel if you are new as well turn your notifications on we've got a whole series of videos from this trip here in skegness plus lots of other travel, nerdy convention content, things like that. There's lots to do. Have a little look around. You'll enjoy yourself, I'm sure. I thank you very much for watching.